we're back. This is episode 11, and literally, I would say our second season, because this is now after 10, we're doing a Toast to Life Women Edition with Miss Mia Pedrosa. Woo! Ready, dear, everybody. Damn. So, <laughs> we're here. Now we're going to get, and what I really wanted, the female aspect and views on pretty much almost everything we talked about in the last episodes because I don't think we give enough credit and how I told her earlier, we don't give enough credit to our women that are either girlfriends, wives, single mothers, and just women in general holding it down for themselves and everybody else around them because I think they do take it upon themselves to just hold everything down. but. Damn, give us give us a background. Who are you? What uh what do you do? Like let's see. So <laughs> let um what year did you graduate high school? So I graduated high school in twenty fourteen. My name is Mia and what else do you wanna know? <laughs> um let's see. So right away I know it it's different because now we're we're hitting putting all this on camera and it's a different from conversations we we can have on the phone compared to now on here so let how was it growing up in your childhood personally because we've got the male aspect that we take up on but as a female like are you the a single uh daughter do you have siblings and if you do have siblings what what age do you have and what what role did you take on okay so i grew up as an only child um raised by a single mother and i loved it <laughs> life was good for me honestly i mean my mother was hella like independent so i appreciated that aspect of it and i guess growing up as an only child because i had my mom and also my grandma i was i was pretty spoiled I would say um I would like my grandma always gave me hella love and my mom because I seen her like being so independent yeah um it just it it inspired me a lot but at times I feel like it was lonely because I was an only child so my mom gave me that freedom to hang out with my friends like if I wanted to sleep over my friend's house she was like all right you can go ahead and sleep over Maria's house, Monique's house. Those are my childhood friends, and I'm still cool with them. Shout out. Yeah, (laughs) still cool with them. And I was with them all the time. My mom knew it was, like, as an only child, like, you get bored. And we didn't have all of that technology. Yeah. Like, they have now, like, tablets and stuff. But, you know, there were those GameCube. Shout out to the GameCube industry. Because, to be honest, I was playing Animal Crossing on GameCube. Um, But... I, the thing about my mom is that like her mom was very strict on her like she told her like oh you can't you can't do this you can't do that so my mom was a little rebel and she went out and did those things mm. so my mom said let me give my daughter the freedom that my mom didn't give me that way my daughter doesn't like fuck up yeah and try to do things behind my back yeah so my mom kept it 100 with me like hella 100 she had me at 15 years old and with that being said she was just very open and honest she told me like if you do this these drugs like this is what's gonna happen to you so she would take me to her because my mom was in a crew <laughs> like a tagging crew at at 15 years old and she was doing those things she grew up in east la so she was taking me with her at 15 wow. my, her grandma my mom well, my grandma and her mom said you had her you're gonna take care of her like yeah. i'm not gonna i'm not there's gonna, no way around yeah it. yeah so my mom was still a little rebel she took me with her to the parties but because my mom took me uh, she just she trusted her friends with me you know thank god they were all cool nothing nothing ever happened nothing ever went down with them like they would see me she's like where's mia where's mia and i was in the parties just dancing like they're like hey you know like <laughs> celebrating with me because i was i was a little dancer yeah and everybody wanted to be around me when I was little because I just had that, like, I wasn't crying. Like, yeah. I was trying to you have fun that when I was You that baby that was just crying and you yeah. were just, like, in the... Yeah, yeah. Um, so they all wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
being that you come from a from a single mother, mm-hmm. being independent, being in what she was before, you know, respects that she she raised you the way she raised you. How did that affect you in high school, growing up in the neighborhood? You know, we grew up because you grew up in Bowling Park, just as I did. Yeah. High school. How was it growing up in high school in that in that environment? You know, because oh. it it. What I what I really want to get into because one, boys are in their you know relationships, the way guys treat you in high school and after high school and just outside like that, that persona that a guy has over a woman which isn't correct but sometimes guys feel the need that hey we can treat you whatever way we treat you like did you allow that? In high school. Nice guys don't finish last. I'm gonna say that because my dad wasn't around. I didn't have like a male figure to show me, and whatever my dad was, like mm-hmm. I look at him and I'm like, you know, no, no disrespect, dad. You, I hope you're doing good now, <laughs> but like my dad was an asshole. You know, he was a player, and I don't know, like he just wasn't it. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm all sorry, but um, I feel like. Don't let nice guys finish last because <laughs> I'm not like, hold up. We're going. They, because, it's, um, about, about, it's what it's about. Well, anyways, like in high school, like I I was young. Yeah. I was young. But I had nice, I had nice, um, like a nice ex. He was cool. He did his part. But at the same time, I got on birth control when I was young. So I feel like that fucked up my hormones. <laughs> I feel like that fucked up my hormones. So I was always bitchy. Um, so in high school, I was kind of chilling. There was nice guys. There was hella nice guys that I had yeah. talked to. They were cool as fuck. Um, it wasn't until after high school that I met an asshole. <laughs> and me, because my mom like taught me um, like to give people the benefit of the doubt, which I still I still do. But like that's when I fucked around with an asshole. And then I I like I look back. I was like, dude, that guy like reflected everything that my dad was you know yeah i guess in the sense that like my ex went to prison and my dad was in jail and i guess that but like i learned you know i learned like i I went through the bullshit like how do you move on from that so how do you get out of like you know and and i'm i'm not that i'm glad that you had to go through that but i'm glad you brought it up because in a weird way, that's one thing that happens. I think that's one thing that, that is said. That girls date the reflection of their dad. Mm-hmm. Or guys date the reflection of their mom. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that is... That that goes true and it falls to a certain extent. But you, you're you saying you did. So how do you get out of that, I would say, trend or, or life? Like, how do you do it personally? Well, like, you go through that bullshit right you fight for it and for me it's just like i put up with it for a year i was fighting i was fighting and then you just come to like a realization that like this ain't me like i'm worth more yeah like it was never me and like i'm fucking like you're up here and you just feel like you know like would, would you say you need a you needed to hold yourself to a level like you're here Instead of a guy bringing in, because that it, that is a trend right now, and if not a trend, but that is a situation right now that I think a lot of girls are going through. Mm-hmm. Guys go through it to an extent too, and we'll get that later. But girls go through it and put up with so much shit for a guy to get to that. Like they bring a girl down here, and it's just like, all right, to what point? What are we? What what's our it? What's our point that we're just done with? Dude, you also have to surround yourself around people who are doing the fucking thing. Like, baby. <laughs> I'm a baby. Cheers. No, it's still awake. <laughs> Cheers. So you're saying, like, surround yourself, right? Yeah, dude, because I had seen a girl. She, shout out to Jessica. Shout out to Jessica. Um, I seen her, she was at the gym hella, like, doing hella work, and I hit her up, because I wanted to go to the gym like that, but I was kind of afraid to go hit the big weights. Yeah. I hit her up, I said, hey, can I work out with you? 
She's like, yeah, come through, like, I go to 24. I was like, cool, me too. Yeah. And so I went with her, and she was just, like, two years older than me. And she started sharing this story, like, how she was with this guy also, and how he, like, fucked up with, like, fucked up on her. I was like, I'm going through the same thing, like, same thing. And I, I, I was telling her my story, and, like, just her confidence, and, like, the way I seen her moving in the gym, I was like, like, I like that. Like, I'm trying to be like that. Yeah. And that's exactly what I fucking did. Like, I got in the gym, I started going more, and, like, just I was like, dude, fuck you. Like, I don't deserve Confidence. this shit. Yeah, in like, yourself. And self-worth, knowing where Ooh. I fucking stood. I was like, I don't deserve this shit. And, like, he saw my confidence, and I was just like, mm-mm. And, like, he was trying to get more, like, close to me. I was like... Changing it up. Yeah, I yeah. done did you. Like, I'm done. And then he had the nerve to tell me, like, oh, I can't believe you didn't fight for us. I was like, fuck you. Like, I fought for us as much as I could. And I was just done. And, like, but that's when the gym became a therapy. But this is, like, the real deal. Like, this is literally, like, conversation. And these are situations that happen every day in a lot of relationships that people don't want to talk about or even put it out there but don't do anything Mm -hmm. is getting out of that of the normality that you got to keep fighting for something that's not even fighting for you not fighting for you but fighting like somebody somebody fighting fighting for you in that aspect because people will say hey yeah i mean you me and you but at the end of the day when it comes down to it like do you really value it do you really so it like yeah. man, like props to you that you got out of it because thank God, dude. Don't get me wrong, like it was cool because I got to learn what the fuck I don't want in a relationship. Like I saw every aspect of it. So what? We, so let's get right. Let's hit the audience that are staying watching, the viewers that stay watching. What would you tell somebody that's in that position right now? Because we're there's girls that are eighteen. There's girls that are 16. There's girls that are 25. There's 30 years old in that position. What would you tell somebody in that right now? Dude, like, it's crazy because I was only in that for two years. So, it in a sense, it was kind of easy for me to pull back. And I'm so thankful that I did. I'm so thankful that I didn't continue to do it. Like, I went through it. I learned through it. I grew in it. I would tell them to just invest in themselves and do something that they that they find that they can love like whatever it is because there's so many things to so what do. helped you hmm? what helped you i would say the gym <sighs> dude the gym and i know it's not like that for everybody it's the thing is people find therapy and drinking mm-hmm. <sighs> but honestly the pain in the gym was like i was like i'll Even take this different. i'll yeah. take this any day you know because i'm gonna grow from it it so it it's crazy because things happen for a reason right that's what that's what they say things happen for a reason Mm -hmm. the other day uh somebody had told me well hey how do you continue doing the gym and this and this if you're drinking i was like look bro i was like don't take the drinking part from what we're talking about because you cannot don't again you cannot take the drinking part from what we're talking about this is why the drinking part is what makes somebody feel comfortable in the most uncomfortable situations or conversations. Mm-hmm. To talk about certain things, maybe not for you, maybe not for me, but for others, they're not comfortable to talk about one of some of the most tragic and most saddened points of their life until they got some sort of drinking. We're just using these drinks to be comfortable in order to speak on them because you need to speak on them. You need to speak on events that happen, that have happened to you, because in order to move on, is you, you got to acknowledge them. You really got to acknowledge them. You have to. You have to freaking acknowledge it, whether that's writing it down, crying by your lonesome self, calling a homie that will not judge you, not provide solutions at the same time, but just listen to you. Because you need facts. people who just listen. Yeah, facts. And then sometimes you need a little, like, push, like... A little nudge, like, hey, do this shit, because it's yeah. going to help. Yeah, because, at, again, at the end of the day, it how you said just earlier, it's about who you have around you at the time. Most definitely. That will help, that will help you. Yes. And, you know, this is, uh, 
a blank shout out to to my girlfriend Brittany behind the scenes like when I was going through my things I, it was a it was a blank statement like hey this is what I'm going through I'm not trying to bring it upon us but this is what I'm going through now I hope it doesn't affect this and it was just like that that's okay I'll help you yeah. and it's those people and I'm not saying like all right get in a relationship with those people not at all what I'm telling you is there's certain people that will care for you no matter what is happening. And there's people that will care for you just until you can help them in a certain way. And it's like if you're able to help somebody without expecting anything anything in return, perfect. Said and done. But there's a lot of, and, I've, and I said it this week, there's a lot of people that will just use you until you they can't use you anymore. After that, they will just... Shoot you away for no reason. Yeah. And it's just like, man, well, like, why were you in the first place? Like, you were here when we started. I can't give it anything in return right now, but maybe later on I can. You don't know that now because you already walked away. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about relationships, so that happened. I'm just going to say, like, some people are going to feel hella lonely. Like, what do you say to those people who feel like they don't have somebody to support them? Ooh. Like, what do they do then? Believe in you. Believe in yourself. Like, I, I literally just said it earlier with my boy Paco sitting in the back. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, Paco. What's going on over there? <laughs> um, I literally said just, it, and I and I say it again, and I said it before this week. And I, I've, again, I've always said this. It's not about how many people believe in you. It's about you believing in you. If you don't believe in you... There is no way that somebody else can believe in you, believe in what you're doing more than what you do because then in a day or two or maybe a week some your motivation just it goes out of the way it loses itself and like what keeps you believing in you it goes back to that same uh a topic that I was talking about this earlier remembering your why por qué <laughs> you remembering your por qué exactly my baby Noah, my my lady, trying to get trying to move on. My family, parents, Benny. grandparents, mm-hmm. my friends around me. That you know, I think as you get older, friends instead of being a big crowd, it turns into a smaller crowd. About that, like why? You ask me, how? Why do you move on? Why do you do what you do? Why do you move the way you do? Dude. I move the way I move because I want to break that generational trauma that I've had. Mm. I've seen my mom break it. She moved a different way. But now it's up to me because I have younger siblings. And I just want to get out of that that poverty mentality of like being so afraid of making decisions, of getting out there. Yeah. It just feels good to be free. Yeah, free like how though? Free and like expressing yourself, standing up for yourself, right? Not being shut down, but like standing up for yourself Having and saying, a voice. "I have a fucking voice." Yeah, like, I can say what I have to say, and I mean what I say. So when when um that it's it's very it goes hand in hand with with girls and with guys. When somebody else tells you as a woman, dude, just. Just stop. Don't say anything. How do you feel about that? How do you go about that? Because right now, what's happening in this world, we think women are crazy. We think women have no sense of what they're saying. How do you take that as a woman? How do you take that as a as a young woman coming up? Well, I'm like, dude, if I mean what I say, I'm going to say what I have to say. Regardless of the repercussions. Yeah, dude. It Honestly, like, if it's not hurting anybody and if it's going to help... Let me say what I have to say. No matter what. No matter what. <laughs> she. Like, no, but again, I'm saying that because, and I told you this earlier, as a man or as men, we think that women don't, don't know too much or don't know of much. Mm-hmm. But in reality, sometimes women just think in a different way that allow men to work in that way. We think hella differently, and Ooh. everybody thinks hella differently. Speak on it. Uh, no, honestly, because, like, we have these preconceived notions. Yeah. I'll say something, 
and somebody else might take it a different way. Exactly. What the fuck? How about <laughs> either I got to be clear on what I'm saying or you got to ask, hey, Mia, is this what you mean? Yeah. Because, bro, so many people are so quick to assume that this person means this. Like, yeah. nah, you grew up a certain way, I grew up a certain way. So yeah. what I mean is different from what you mean. Ooh. That's a communication that's <laughs> important. That people don't understand. Oh, people, people don't want to understand. Or they just can't fucking understand. Comprehend <laughs> yeah, they can't the comprehend it. Yeah. Because everybody says communication is key. But what kind of communication are you throwing out there? Yeah. Like, are you being passive aggressive? Yeah. Are you being loud are you screaming or you just don't want to understand it because yeah. now it's coming from somebody else not somebody else but a different gender that literally may know more than you and may comprehend it more than what you're comprehending mm -hmm. it's just us or are not you, wanting to yeah are you just mr right like i gotta be right all the time yeah because i'll fucking ruin shit <laughs> and it, it again it for the for the the guys watching, for the girls watching, there is a level to everything. When you're right, you're right, and when you're wrong, you're wrong. Regardless of who you are, what the situation is, you're right, you're right, you're wrong, you're wrong. If you did wrong, and we're if we're talking about relationships, you did wrong, and you gotta admit it, and you gotta take whatever repercussion comes from it. And if you're and if you're right, and if they don't want to understand it. You can only do so much until you got to walk away. Right? There, there. Again, we talk about the it point of walking away from the situation that just pays no respect and no, no attention to you to for you to be okay. Because me speaking because of the household that we have, that I have, that me and Brittany have, mm -hmm. there's a certain level that has to be working. Yeah. There's a certain of middle part that, that needs to be met. And if it's not met, it's not a good home. Yeah. Because it's just arguing, unhappiness, and it doesn't work. Because I said it, I think in the, I think in our, in mine and her episode, which is like episode three, I believe. We have the most highest rate of divorce in a young age. Because we jump into it without really knowing, and then... At the end of the day, when shit hits the fan, we divorce. That's it. And that is just crazy. But we'll get to that right after this little, small little break. Because we'll refill and we'll come right back. So la, la, la. stay tuned. <laughs> what small did you do? Ooh, what, what did we <laughs> We're do? We're back in the house. Back in the house. Small intermission. Um, Let's jump right into it because we're on a time limit. To keep you guys entertained. So, what would you say after high school? What was your idea and what was your plan? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and my idea was to follow, like, that routine of going to graduate school or no, like, going to college. So I was supposed to go to San Francisco State. And I tried to seek out as much as advisory as I can, like going to these college fairs and seeing what I could do because I was going to be the first generation college student. Nice. Um, I got accepted to San Francisco State and my mom got a DUI and shit just turned. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. She's like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, we can't afford the room that you're trying to get. And I was like, all right. It was kind of okay with me because I was like, fuck it, whatever. It is what it is. So yeah. I decided to go to Mount Sac and I went to Mount Sac um, nearby college. I was comfortable near my family, right? So that's what it was. <laughs> nice. So, all right, you did that. Now let's get into a more deeper. Going to a community college, what kept you motivated to continue in community college or to get through there actually more than anything just seeing all like the jobs that i was trying to apply to they're like oh we require a bachelor's degree 
And then, like, looking at the statistics, like, I just seen that people who had a bachelor's degree were supposed to make more than people who didn't have a degree. Mm. So that's what kept me motivated. But, I mean, like, maybe you're, you're telling the full truth. But, again, to, there's a lot of, of people, there's me, others, that say, hey, who needs to go to college? Find another way. What would, what would you say to that? Like, again, let's go through your perspective, a human but a woman perspective. There's a lot that people take upon. Did you take upon thir- certain things that kind of made you rethink why you need to keep going or why to go? Yeah, like I came across people who had already established businesses who had took off from their family business. And they were doing good, and I was like, all right, there's that way. But at the same time, like, I didn't have that. Like, it was, it to me, it was like, you had to get a degree to make it, or if not, you could pop off this other certain way. But I wasn't too sure what way I had to pop off. So, like, what was your way? Yeah, so the easiest way for me was like, okay, let's get a degree. But I got my degree, and... I'm trying to look for a job. So it's kind of hard right now. Like, I've talked to people that are like, oh, it's because of the pandemic. I'm like, is it really? Or like, what the fuck is it really? Like, I'm trying to find my way still. And I don't have it figured out. I'm going to get it figured out maybe eventually. Not right now. But I'm trying to get those steps to figure it out. You feel me? Yeah. So now getting into the next topic. What do you got to go through as a woman in society now that you have came across that you know, like, hey, you want, like, I know you, we spoke upon this, right, like earlier, but now as an adult, as a full grown woman, is there certain things that happen to you that is just like, dude, this isn't, like, I'm a woman, but this isn't right? Have you came across certain things? Have they viewed your opinion? As a lower thing, like what, like what is it? I feel like women are hella strong, but there's a lot of things that women go through that men don't go through, and you'll see it on the the stories of Instagram, Twitter nowadays. Like a lot of having to be aware of your surroundings more than men have to be, mm. right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, because. I bought Brittany, like, a whole setup from, uh, I think it's called Protected by Carla on IG. And it was, like, a taser. It was, like, a, a stabber. Oh, shit. <laughs> a pepper <laughs> spray. Let me see it. Like, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was just, like, dude, I want you to feel okay when you get out of work. Yeah. Late. Yeah. Yeah. But speak upon that, like. Dude. All right. So, right after high school. I didn't have a car for two years, so I was walking my little ass to college, taking the motherfucking bus. Shout out to Rogelio. He was taking the bus with me. Shout out to you because I saw you in school (laughs) at Mount Sac, and this this fool came through and picked me up in the mornings as well. Shout out to Wendy. I didn't have a car for two years right after high school, so I was walking, taking the bus, and there would be times that I'd be taking the bus and, like, I remember some cars would pull up on me, like, trying to get at me, and I'm just like, like, I got a bus pass. I'm cool. I don't need a ride. But it just felt like, oh, like, scary. And and I was dressing in just jeans, you know, a regular fitted top, just trying to, you know, flex. (laughs) Flex for a bit. But I started feeling like, damn, I guess my curves are showing. So I started dressing like hella bummy, like in sweats, more comfortable, not even bummy, just more comfortable. I was like, dude, I hope no one tries to like pull up on me and put throwing my hood on. Like I didn't care. And I just wanted to feel safe because I was taking the bus like late and going to work late. So I was just like trying to be safe. Yeah. But just things like that. And I was just like, all right, um, you know, I'm here. Like, and even with homies, you know, there'd be times where Jesus. friends would be like, oh let's kick it like i just want to talk to you and like sometimes they'd be trying to make a move i was like bro i thought you're just here for the good vibes like yeah like i thought like this is this is it 
And that's just me because my mom told me like to give people the benefit of the yeah, doubt, yeah. which oh, I did. Saying, yeah. And now I'm just like. So, but did that break that bridge for what those for homies or those friends? Yeah, dude. Like I'm now. I'm just over. It. Like I'm like I'm about the good vibes, adventure. If you want to spill your beans to me, like that's cool. I'm down for that. I'm down to hear you out. But if you're trying to make moves, mm-mm, like I'm just over it. <laughs> So let's talk about women empowerment in in this last segment. Let's talk about that. What do you give a a woman to girls, women watching that are just like trying to figure themselves out, trying to figure out that next step, trying to figure out that uh get out the relationship they're in or trying to move make that move in in, in work or college like because again, we go back into a lot of people, a lot of guys look down upon women for no reason, but we think you got that you guys are beneath a, a man for no reason. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you, how do, you, how did you get away from that, or how did you overcome that? And now we're trying to figure this shit out. <sighs> like, I just want to hug all of you all going through that because it sucks as fuck but you just have to dive into something that you love and that's what i'm saying like i started going to the gym and trusting the process like it hurt it hurts trust the fucking process trust the fucking process it's all about patience consistency right Mm -hmm. consistency and patience no doubt you're not gonna get the results if that's one thing I learned through going through the gym, it's like you're not going to get the results the next day. It's all about patience. Like, it took me a year to get my results. Yeah. And then that shit went down because of COVID. And I didn't fucking try to get that shit. But it's all about trusting the process, putting your love into something. I would say try to put that shit in the gym, books, whatever you're passionate about. If it's makeup, if it's creating content writing blogging whatever it is just try to stay away from the alcohol try to stay away from the drugs try to stay away from sex like it's not about that like feel the fucking pain it hurts but it's so powerful so would you say stop trying to replace the pain with with the temporary solution and just embrace the pain what's happening yeah, I know it's fucking hard though. It's fucking hard. <laughs> right? It's fucking hard. Because I so we're, we'll get into that that this the other topic now. Literally embracing what you're going through and taking accountability of what you're going through. <laughs> like this there's a lot of situations that are not good. Yeah. Not good for you. Mm-hmm. But people still go through it because they think it'll be okay. Yeah. In reality they're not. Again, as guys we can just be like, ah, we're dudes. We can brush this shit off. We're we're men. We can continue. <laughs> yeah, or you keep your busy mind preoccupied, and then on the weekends you're just. Three, 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 three. Let me take a curveball. What would you tell the woman that don't feel valued? What would you tell a woman that doesn't feel like they're worth something in this world? You're worth so much, honestly. Like they are. They just have to tap into it. And it's hard to feel it by yourself because there's guys behind you manipulating you. Maybe childhood trauma that said you're not worth it. But hit me up. I'll let you know that you're worth it. Dude, you too. You're a good motherfucking coach. I don't know. You're teaching these people out here that they are. You're spreading the word. And that's what's up. Like, I know you're here and you mean good. Dude, Thank you. You like you have to believe in it. And if you don't, like you talk about like not believing in religion, you don't like to talk about religion. It's a hard subject. It's a hard subject for a lot of people. Oh, but fuck. is it so true? It, yeah. And and, and, and the hard. reason so we tapped in with, with our boy Caesar in episode ten about this, about believing in a higher power. You know, what what got me here in this position in this scenario in this in this vision in this platform was because i believed in something else that helped me did you do that 
did you believe in something else or what did you believe in that helped you get into this position because i feel if if whoever watched this far seeing what you had to go through and talking about what you had to go through is wondering like how like dude how'd you get there what made you go through it how'd you get in that position what what was it dude believing praying i feel like i have to pray harder but it's not about just the praying but it's about the actions also yeah right for sure it's about believing having that greater faith but pushing through and sometimes your vision is so blurred like you're in the struggle and you might not be able to vision where you want to be but you just have to trust the process that this little step is going to take you to this next little step and you might get pushed back but just know that that little pushback might just leap you a little forward like you just have to believe it and you have to pursue it yeah. people are going to tell you no but you just got to keep on like going through it yeah. keep on breaking through it i think that's like the the hard part for a lot of people for a lot of people even as men to believe that there's a there's a better place that there's a better anything that we don't think that that's even possible man how far are we in 13 damn 13 minutes we're good we're good we're that's for like 43 minutes um but yeah like there's a lot of a lot of things that we think that there's not possible like we don't believe there's a brighter side to this this uh <laughs> cloudy days we don't think there's a like a greener side to this dead grass you know like i how you said earlier about who you have around you like uh, literally how the rapper kevin gates said like you gotta cut your grass to see the snakes around you what how do you cut your fucking Ooh. grass bro what do you do Ooh, you, I can't get <laughs> you, you need to see who's around you when the when shit gets tough when oh, things get tough. because literally like we spoke about it me and Brittany before you know i probably you guys hear uh noah crying uh but we spoke about it like when we had noah about who was around when we had him and there's not a lot of people we both had to cut people off mm -hmm. but then we talk about the lifestyle of being parents and it's about again who you have around you that accepts that lifestyle <laughs> and we had very few around that that literally we can appreciate that and now like taking these videos and we have noah in the background <laughs> making uh mia laugh because yeah. he's flirting over there ha huh, dude <laughs> But, um, yeah, cutting the grass, literally as hard as it, as it may seem, as hard as it may seem to cut people off, it's really about trimming the tree, trimming the grass. Not everybody that you think is good for you is meant to be for you. And not everybody that you think that's supposed to be for your life is meant to be in your life. And that's something about how you said earlier about believing in the higher power that he throws out events in your life or situations in your life that will make you understand and see it you just gotta accept it and you gotta go with it if you stay in that situation or those type of friendships or relationships you're gonna find out a hard way that they're just not meant for you you know uh i believe i really believe how you're just saying that somebody above will throw those signs at you and uh that will keep hurting when until you make the realization that you got to pay attention to them. And if you don't, you are in a world of hurt. You're in a world of, of sadness that will happen. And that's what sucks. So um, We are the creators of our life. Oof. We get to choose what we want. So I was re I'm reading a book, or I finished reading the book. It's called The Toltec of Arts death and life i might have it wrong by don miguel ruiz and he says are you a bee or are you a fly what's the difference so flies like poo poo and bees like honey oh what's poo poo what shit. do you think poo poo is <laughs> the worst poo poo is shit talking negative self-doubt right Ooh. 
Yes. Can you agree that a lot of people self doubt themselves? A lot. But what's what's a bee like? What do you think bees like? They go out and they get the good stuff. They what do the they hum. like? They see the the ugliness and they get the most beautiful part of everything. They like honey. What's honey? Amazing. Self love. Ooh. Spreading love. That book is really good. It's a good book. And honestly, he says a lot of people are like flies. They like boo boo. <laughs> they like talking shit. They doubt themselves. And you're and the people around you will say that. The people yeah. around you will even do that behind you. Right? Well, that's it. We're, we're about to wrap it up. So <laughs> let's like, hold it up. Let's hold it up. Don't even what? People yeah. around you. And so right away, before we end this, the people around you will downplay you, will speak down upon you or speak behind you about why you shouldn't do it or why that person shouldn't do it because they're just afraid to outgrow you. They're, they're, afraid. they're afraid for you out to outgrow them. And they're afraid to you just to move on from them. And that's why a lot of people stay in that same situation because their friends are in that same situation. And they won't why? move on from it. Why? Why? We feel the validation that those people are, are bigger than anything else in this world. If I win, you win. Right? It's about who you have around you, right? If you want your friends to win, they'll make you win. Yeah. If you don't want them to win, then you'll be in the same shit every day. There'll be a a fly instead of a bee. Papa. There'll be, yeah, there'll be shit. And you'll be shit. I think in the... Who did I hear this from? I forgot who I heard this from, but they said, if you're around... And I said it, I think, in the other podcast or two episodes ago. If you're around three broke friends, you'll be the fourth. And if you're around three entrepreneur friends, you'll be the fourth entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. But we are writers of our own story no matter what. Until, again, you don't need to believe in our story because we ourselves believe in our story. And I think our spiritual selves believe in that even more. I hope whoever watches this, you start to believe in yourself the way we do. And whatever you may need, don't. <laughs> Damn. That's my son believing in that. Again. <laughs> he said, amen. Yeah. Uh, again, this isn't. <laughs> this podcast is just filmed off of a family home that is just trying to spread that message. They're getting you it. Got it. They're homie. getting it. They know the grind. They understand that when they keep on continuing this shit, that their baby. They're going to be at their soccer games watching that shit. And he's, we're going to be probably filming bro, it, man. We'll probably bring him. He doesn't Noah. understand it now, but he will. He will. No, come here. A baby. Come here. Like probably, I think, one years old. But he's going to get it when he's like 15. You and ready? they're out there at the soccer game. Let's game. say bye to everybody. Here, let's give the keys back to them. Just honestly, just stay tuned. Look. <laughs> You ready? Hey. Okay, we gotta let this guy go. <laughs> oh. He'll he'll get it. He'll get it. He'll hey, get hey, it. Hey. <laughs> he'll get it. But uh, so we'll we'll end this one with more to come. Um, stay tuned. Good the vibes. Females, good vibes. The women's watching this. Stay positive. Hey. Be the positive outlook in your life. <laughs> if you have anything, reach out to <laughs> any one of us. Because that's what people need. They need somebody in their lives. Good vibes, good vibes good all vibes around. Good vibes all around all here. Around. With that, a toast to life. Let's a toast to life. There a toast go. to patience. Oh, shit. And Let's love go. yourself. Stay tuned. Only one third. Or two thirds. <laughs>